Hi, I'm Keith Whitelock. Welcome to Watercolor Workshop. Today I'm going to work with some masking fluid. I mentioned one time before about painting around objects to save the whites. This time we're going to use some masking fluid to cover up some little flowers. And the subject will be white flowers against a very dark background. And you'll see how effective this material is. Hope you enjoy it. Here's an example of the type of painting I'm going to do today. This is just some daisy-like flowers with an abstract background, but it really shows off what the masking fluid can do. The flowers are the original white paper, and I'll show you how we work that up. First, I'm going to do a quick sketch and outline where I want the major flowers. Now these will be covered with masking fluid a little later and we'll have an abstract background and bring the stems down rather like this. I will draw in the petals like so and if I'm happy with the basic design here I will now trace that onto uh, the back of the paper and we'll rub that directly onto the watercolor paper so we can begin. I have a light table for tracing designs on watercolor paper and transferring sketches, but you can simply put the sketch up against a window and trace the design onto the back and then you can rub this design onto the watercolor paper. Now the watercolor paper I'm using is cold pressed 300 pound. It's got some texture to it, but it's not really a rough paper. And using this old brush, I will just rub over the lines. And hopefully, when I take it away, it's very faint, but I have a set of outlines here that I can now go over very lightly with pencil. Now this is very hard to see, but it gets just the very barest essentials onto the paper. And then I can very, very lightly redraw the flowers in this case. And this is pretty much a departure from what I usually do. I really do like boats and landscapes. But any kind of an intricate subject where you need to save the white paper, the masking fluid works really, really well. Now I've completed the minimum pencil drawing on this paper and I'm going for the masking fluid. This masking fluid is a clear type, it dries clear, and I'm using an old brush because this masking fluid, if it doesn't get removed from the brush, can actually ruin a brush. It'll just turn into a plastic stick. And carefully painting this fluid on only over the petals. Now these are the petals that I want to be nice and bright and white in the finished painting. It's hard to see. They do sell masking fluids that are either gray or yellow, but they could possibly tint the paper and I don't want that to happen. So I'm just going to paint a nice little wet some of this onto the petals and let it dry thoroughly. When you work with masking fluid, you want to make sure that the paper is nice and dry or else the masking fluid won't come off later. It actually rubs away, almost like rubber cement. And I'll put just a little bit down here where I'm going to have a couple of leaves and perhaps leave just a couple of highlights for some stems. Now, as I said, you can't see this very good. To tell you the truth, I can't see it very good. You have to be 
a little careful with it. Sometimes alter the direction of the paper and we'll let that dry down completely. I mentioned that I'm using 300 pound watercolor paper. That's a very thick paper. The same kind of paper is available in a 140 weight. It's much thinner. And what the weight refers to is the weight of 500 sheets of the larger uncut pieces of paper. You will sometimes see 200 pound paper, but it's really the same thing as the 140 weight. It's just that the original sheets were much larger. I like the thicker paper because it doesn't buckle and wiggle around so much when it's wet, but that's a matter of personal preference. The texture paper comes in three kinds. Hot pressed, which is smooth, cold pressed, which is sort of a medium finish, and rough, which you would expect is a much rougher textured surface. Just before we paint, we'll refer to the finished example. As you can see behind the little daisies, there's an abstract bunch of greenery and that's a wet into wet piece of work that we'll establish first. As in other wet into wet work, we're going to cover the entire paper with a wash of nice clean water. Now we want that water to soak into the paper a little bit. It's very hard to see. We can turn it and look at the sheen on the paper. That gives me an indication of just how wet it is and how things are going to creep. So what I'm going to do first is take a little yellow ochre, fairly bold, and I'm going to brush right over top of the flowers with an abstract motion. And this will create a nice stain, background stain. This looks like a spray of flowers. It will even indicate some abstract leaves. And suddenly you see part of this image start to come out. And it's okay to paint right over top of the flowers. That's what the masking fluid will protect. Now, they're not quite jumping out enough to suit me. So maybe I'll take a little brown and darken that some more. And perhaps even a little blue-green. This is sort of a viridian mixed with the brown. I'm going to let some of that creep back here. And I can put some little plant-like brush strokes in. And it's going to continue to creep and mix, which is fine. That's just exactly what I want it to do. And directly behind the flowers, I'm going to go with an even darker mixture of Phthalo blue and brown, burnt umber to be exact. And this makes a nice foundation from which these flowers are going to jump out at us. And I'll switch to a little round brush just so I can put some more little organic shapes in. And we'll keep it nice and green. And we'll just abstractly put these shapes in. Maybe I want a couple of the stems to be a little more apparent. And I'll add a little more blue. A little more brown right inside here. It's very dark. And remember, it will dry a little lighter than what you see it right now. It looks very messy over the flowers. But this technique works really well for any intricate 
light colored object that you want to have a dark surround in and there's no way we can paint around all of these little flowers and keep up what we're doing. This is a very useful technique that I use for certain tree branches or trunks or little fine railings on boats and there are times when I will mask out an entire sail of a boat or two so I can get the sky to do what I want. So we're going to let this dry down now because the next step involves rubbing away some of this masking fluid. While waiting for this to dry, I think I'm going to take a brush, previously wet brush, dry it on a cloth, and I'm going to soak just a little of that extra color off of some of that masking fluid. That could stick to my fingers, and it might smear. Not a big problem. And I also added just a tiny warm orange. To that background because I know I'm going to put orange centers in the flowers and that's a good way to take some of that particular color and distribute it through the painting to keep the subject and the, and the background uh, tied together. After a few minutes, the paper is dried down now, and we can actually go for the big reveal. Now, you have to remember, the paper has to be bone dry with masking fluid to apply it and to remove it. And you want to make sure your fingers are nice and dry, too. And basically, we can just take and rub the finger over the, the dried fluid, and it rubs away very much like rubber cement would. And when we're all finished with that, you'll see that it saved the paper really nicely in the intricate pattern. It actually looks nice and too bright now, so we'll fix that up with some new paint. Now, with the masking fluid rubbed away, we can actually begin to paint. And it's totally a matter of personal preference about what you would like to mix up first. I'm going to take and mix up a little white green, which is a little phthalo blue and some yellow ochre. And I'm going to lightly paint over the leaves that the masking fluid saved for us. And I'll hit that stem, and this stem, and this stem. And then using a darker color, I'm going to direct paint a couple more stem and leaf-like structures to add some interest and we'll use some brownish green and sort of pick up on these other stems Let that dry. For the centers of the daisies, I'm going to use a little cadmium yellow and a little red and come up with a fairly bright orangey color. And we'll just dab a little of that in the center of each flower. And suddenly they start looking like something. And then we'll add a little light blue, sort of a little sky blue color, on the shadow side of the petals. So we have to determine a light source. Let's say that the light is coming from this upper right corner. So that will put this side of the, the flower in the shade. So these petal tips will be shaded, as will these. 
and just a little touch is effective. And I don't want to get near that little orange center yet because I don't want the blue to contaminate it. I suppose what I could do is get a little bit of a darker red and touch the shadow side of that. If I do want the color to creep a little, if I can go a little stronger. And that'll actually make that little part of the flower look a little more three-dimensional. And I can use a little darker green, highlight some of these little leaves. Now if the center of the flower has dried down well, we can work now from the center outward. And that'll make the flowers look a little more three-dimensional. Maybe we'll put just a little more of that shadowing down here on the tips. And remember, if we think something like that is just a little too dark, we can touch that with the paper towel and take away a little of the color. That's called lifting. And while we're talking about lifting, we'll demonstrate a technique for putting a little lighter stem right in the middle. Suppose we just take a little clear water I'll repeatedly paint over that area with the clear water. Take this paper towel, press it tightly, lift it away, and it will actually pull up a little line of that paint. You may have to repeat it. And it's a technique that works better with some papers and some colors than others. It's a watercolor correction technique. We can always try that to fix an area that you're not totally happy with. In that case, we've lifted out a little bit of that stem, put a little bit more of a highlight on it. Now, just for some detailing, I've gone with a very tiny round brush, and we'll put just a little bit of a burnt sienna, burnt umber brown, in the center of the flower. And I'll rinse that away and I'll go with just a little of this darker blue as well. And I'll just put a couple of, just a couple of little tick marks in certain flower petals here. And that will sort of define just the edges of a few of the petals or perhaps just a few of the little ridges. And remember, this is implied detail. This is a little bit of an impressionistic work. We're not going to go for photorealistic detail here. We're getting the impression of these. And all of a sudden, they start looking pretty effective. And lastly, we'll mix a little brown. We'll mix a little green together. We can always add some dark blue. And we'll throw in a few more defined stem lines, a few more little defined leaves. And that adds interest. This is sort of an abstract piece. 
Some of these brush strokes could be referred to as calligraphy even. And I do want to balance out the bottom with a couple of fairly little strong lines. And I'm pretty happy with that composition. Maybe a couple of random grass-like sprigs. And if I'm happy with that, I'll sign off on it. I think we'll just use a little of the burnt sienna that we used before. And I'll just sign my first name on that one. And that gives us a fairly effective, very fast painting using masking fluid to mask out these nice bright areas that we wanted to save. I think these white flowers could really use a companion piece and it'll give me a chance to show you one more little interesting technique. Since this painting is going to be a companion to the other one, I've skipped ahead and pretty much done exactly as you saw me do with the white flowers. I've already taken and painted all of the wet into wet in the background and rubbed away the masking fluid here to expose some new flowers. Now these have a little different shape and they're going to be an entirely different color. I'm going to take a nice bright yellow color and apply it to the petal area. And you can see how effective that is for creating these nice yellow flowers. I'll try not to overpaint the green by very much. But just do these nice bright petals. Now, just as I did with the other flowers, we're going to pick up a little bit of a light source. So what I'm going to do is bring the light from the upper left and our shadow areas will be on the opposite side that we did before. Now switching to a smaller brush, we'll just put a couple of the nice little 
ridges and lines in the shadows that you would find under or around a few of the petals. Now we might want just a little sunshine on the top part of that, so I'll put a little lighter blue there. And then we'll come in with a very dark brown, some burnt umber, some burnt sienna mixed together, and work on the center of this flower. And we'll let that creep in there, a little wet into wet. And now the flower starts to take shape. So now you can see it's very similar to the other one, but then again very different because of the nice bright yellow flowers. You may not be able to pick up on the contrast of this center part, but I do want that to be a little darker, especially on what's going to be my shady side. And of course we're going to have to work on the, uh, the leaves and stems so I can get in here with some nice dark green. And just like I did for the other painting, we'll add some leaf shapes. Some indicated details. Sprigs of grass and stems. And matching the other piece, we'll give it a little signature. And I think that goes along with matching the other piece very nicely. Well, I hope you found that little demonstration interesting. The masking fluid worked really well in keeping the paper nice and bright and white so we could do those flowers. And I've found many, many uses for masking fluid. Sometimes it can tend to rough up the paper a little bit, so I don't like to use it on great big areas unless I absolutely need it. But it's a great tool. It works very effectively. Hope you enjoyed the demonstration. See me again here on Watercolor Workshop on Pack 14. I'm Keith Whitelock. <music>